Okay, so uh, I've been requested. Okay, we're resuming our meeting at recording uh, in progress. Mm, yeah, it's recording in progress. Uh, we're resuming our meeting um, at 12 12.42. Uh, Pilar has stepped away uh, from the meeting. Uh, she did that earlier, I believe, at around 10.45. 10.45. So uh, I've been requested that on items uh, six and seven, that the applicant would like to do take them out of turn and have seven before six. So I said, that's fine. So uh, let's do item seven. Yes, commissioners. Item seven is proposed monument nomination for the Ozawa Boarding House slash Obayashi Employment Agency located at 564 to 564 and a half North Virgil Avenue. The staff recommendation is that the commission take the property under consideration and adopt the staff report findings. And I believe we have Lindsay Mulcahy here from Hollywood Heritage to present the nomination. Hi, thank you. Um, I think Brian Kern wanted to do um, a quick intro before I got started. I don't know if that's possible. Sure, is he? Where is he? Um, he should be here. He just texted me. I just brought, I just promoted him to panelists, so give him a few seconds. Yes, hello. Thank you, commissioners. Brian Kern, Hollywood Heritage. Um, I'd like to thank you for giving a hearing to the Joyce Boarding House Azawa residents at 560 Virgil Avenue and the Azawa Boarding House Obayashi Employment Agency located at 564 Virgil Avenue. Taking a cue from the citywide initiative such as the City Civic Memory Commission, Hollywood Heritage in the past year has been making efforts to look beyond the traditional vision of Hollywood history to identify, honor, and celebrate sites that speak to the broader community and the histories that have been often overshadowed by the region's motion picture and celebrity-centric identity. 560 and 564 Virgil Avenue, humble boarding houses, which speak to the Japanese American context, are our first sites that we are presenting in relation to these efforts. We would also like we would also like to say that the owner of the two properties, uh, Matin Ma Ma Madizade, uh, has been very cooperative in granting access, providing documents, and keeping open regular communication during this process. He hopes to restore the buildings and retain their use as much as as much as possible and uh, for much needed affordable housing in the SRO model. We hope that we can work with the staff to ensure that the work continues through this process. Finally, we were honored to have the support of the Ozawa family, a member who I met, who was planning on being here today, so I hope that they will speak in public comment. And with that, I turn the presentation over to uh, Lindsay, Hollywood Heritage's preservation intern and whose energy and exceptional research is responsible for this nomination today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Barron, I was hoping to have a little extra time for this first one to lay out the context statement for both of the buildings. Um, I was hoping 13 or 14 minutes and then a much shorter presentation, five or six minutes for, for the second building. Uh, 13 minutes. You got it. Okay. Great. Um, Perfect. Share my screen. All right. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. Again, I'm Lindsay Mulcahy here on behalf of Hollywood Heritage, asking you to take item seven, the Asawa Boarding House and Obayashi Employment Agency under consideration as a Los Angeles Historic Cultural Monument. The property is a uh, two-story boarding house with a detached single-story garage um, located at 564 North Virgil Avenue in East Hollywood. The original building was constructed in 1912 as a single family residence and expanded and converted into a boarding house between 1924 and 1927. Its period of significance extends from 1912 to 1980 when the Asawa family sold the building. Uh, the building is an extremely rare example of pre-war Japanese boarding house. More broadly, it helps us understand early residential patterns in East Hollywood that generated a thriving Japanese American community known as the Madison J. Flats neighborhood. The building documents the lives of Japanese immigrants and laborers, largely gardeners who boarded out the house. It also tells the story of the proprietors, the Asawa family, whose tenure demonstrates the stabilization and growth of the Japanese American middle class. 
Despite being incarcerated during World War II, the Asawa family returned to their home and the building took on a new significance in the post-war years, reuniting family members and helping the Japanese American community rebuild. Uh, this building, 564, as well as 560 Virgil, are the only known remaining boarding houses in LA, actively used both in the pre- and post-war period. Lindsay, this is Melissa Jones from the Office of Historic Resources. We're not seeing your full slide. It looks like it's cut oh. off on our side. Oh, there we go. That looks full. Oh. Okay, there we go. I just uh, decrease the size. Can you still see it now? Yes. Yes. And we can see the full slide now. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Um, let me just move my notes so I can continue to see those. Um, all right. Um, moving on to Criterion 2. Um, the Asawa family uh, played a significant role in the development of the Madison J. Flats neighborhood. Suke Saku and Suya Osawa expanded their home into a boarding house in 1924, which the family then operated for close to seven decades. Over the years, the Asawas acquired seven additional properties in the neighborhood, including 560 Virgil, and actively shaped civic life um, in the neighborhood. Particularly significant is Suyo Sawa, the matriarch of the family, who, while overlooked in the historical record, um, it was her strategic business decisions and neighborhood involvement that made the family leaders in their community. Um, the property also fits in with in several surveillé historic context themes. Uh, the 1912 single family dwelling at the rear of the boarding house is representative of early 20th century construction in the neighborhood. The building as a whole exemplifies the boarding houses associated with early Japanese American industry. And the property's location on Virgil Ave along the historic Temple Streetcar line and the J Flats commercial corridor links it to the growth of the Japanese American commercial and social activity in the pre war period. Um, I'll situate us in a first brief historic context. Uh, starting with the first wave of Japanese immigrants to Southern California between 1868 and 1910 in response to the need for labor on U.S. railroads, an agreement between Hawaiian and uh, Japanese sugar plantations, and the Russo-Japanese War. These first-generation immigrants, Issei, were mostly young single men who worked as laborers, and they used the knowledge they immigrated with to transition into and transform California's agricultural landscape. Suke Saku Osawa left Japan in 1902 as part of this wave and a few years later was running a small farm in Glendale. Uh, Tsuyo Osawa immigrated a few years later in 1909 as one of the 20,000 picture brides that immigrated to the U.S. between 1908 and 1920. She, like other picture brides, arrived with just a photo of her future husband, Suke Saku. The arrival of these women marks the beginning of the early Japanese settlement period between 1911 and 1924, during which Sukisaku and Suya had three children and moved to 564 Virgil. Despite racially restrictive housing covenants and the 1913 and 1920 California alien land laws that stripped immigrants of property rights, Japanese immigrants succeeded in forming residential community enclaves throughout the city. The Asawas had the support of white and Latino neighbors who helped them purchase their properties and that were eventually transferred into their children, American-born um, names. The period of stabilization and growth in the Japanese community um, between the years 1925 and 1940 saw the rise of Japanese-led organizations and commercial ventures. These sites were hugely significant as places of community connection and cultural expression in an era when Japanese and Japanese Americans were excluded from much of white Los Angeles. And J Flats in the Dayton Heights tracks in East Hollywood was one of these early residential communities. Uh, the track developed slowly, sewage wasn't complete until 1910, and through the 30s, lots remained underdeveloped. And you can see here on the left, the original house built in 1912, um, and then in this next slide, you can see the boarding house um, and the growing density of the neighborhood by 1950. Um, since 1905, Japanese immigrants had begun to shape East Hollywood, and the first major period of Japanese settlement to J Flats uh, began in 1914, the same year that the Osawa was moved in. And uh, 1925 marked the beginning of a second wave of Japanese migration to the neighborhood. Uh, coinciding with the expansion of 564 as a boarding house. By 1936, there were 150 homes with 1,000 Japanese American residents in the neighborhood. And here you can see the boundaries of the neighborhood um, as described in 1936 by a Japanese USC student um, outlined in turquoise, and then in 2018 by Survey LA 
in um, yellow. And the main commercial corridor, again, was on Virgil, with residences on Westmoreland, Madison, Middlebury, Commonwealth, and Clinton. And the main occupation of these residents, both at the boarding house and the neighborhood at large, was as gardeners and day workers. Many of these men were employed in private residences west of Vermont in Hollywood. However, by 1936, a third of the residents were employed in middle-class professions, including nurse Mary Akita, a key figure in the Japanese hospital in Boyle Heights, local shop owners like the Hoshizaki family who ran Fuji Akash and grocery store in Virgil and the Asawas. And moreover, the community was shaped by, um, as well as actively resisted, racist and xenophobic policies and practices of the time. White residents throughout Hollywood grew increasingly hostile as Japanese families moved to suburban neighborhoods. And in 1923, residents of central Hollywood sought to intimidate and displace the Japanese residents along Tamarin Avenue. LA City Council encouraged this by condemning five Japanese-owned properties, including the Japanese Presbyterian Church, which relocated to, Jap to Madison J. Flats in 1927. And here's a statement from um, the Reverend at the time explaining that decision. And the congregation joined an ethnically diverse neighborhood in Jay Flats, where Japanese, African-American, Latinx, and white residents live side by side. Um, you can see here a map from 1927, um, as well as comments from some of the African-American and Japanese-American residents uh, talking about the interracial uh, relationships and solidarity at the time. Um, by 1941, the Asawa family had grown. Saku and Suya's adult sons, George and Joe, were both married and had begun raising their children at the boarding houses when they were forcibly removed in 1942 to a camp in Harbor Mountain, Wyoming. Many of these of their African American and white neighbors stood in solidarity, caring for their property during the war. A white Sunday school from a nearby church on Melrose served as power of attorney for these all properties while they were incarcerated. And these social networks were really crucial in supporting Japanese resettlement. Um, after the war, and we know that at least six families, including the Asawas, returned to Jay Flats, a uh, really incredible testament to the fortitude and commitment to the neighborhood they had built. I briefly also want to highlight this neighborhood was and still is anchored by a commercial corridor on Virgil, and this list from 1939 demonstrates the hub of businesses, largely on the 600 block of Virgil, and you can see here, um, called the Obayashi Employment Agency, uh, 564 Virgil. Um, there were also a number of community institutions, including the Japanese Presbyterian Church, Japanese Language School, and Hollywood Japanese Cultural Institute, all established in the settlement period between 1925 and 1940. Um, and while incarceration again devastated the economic and social fabric of the neighborhood, these institutions helped the community rebuild. And both the Cultural Institute and the church continue to serve their community today. Um, the first boarding house for Japanese immigrants in LA was built in the late 19th century, and by 1950 there were, or 1915, there were almost 80 scattered across the city. Uh, the larger boarding houses, mostly in Little Tokyo, were stone construction up to four stories, while smaller ones in residential neighborhoods were one to story wood frame built things. They housed laborers, farmers, and gardeners, and many also served as employment agencies and sometimes banks. Um, immigration laws and the movement of family to suburban neighborhoods reduced the need for these houses, and by 1936, only 18 remained. However, uh, the few left served a critical need in the post-war period to resettle Japanese Americans after incarceration, like the Kobayakawa uh, boarding house, uh, which is no longer extant. The Isawa family, as I've described, originally built their wealth by farming, then a produce stand on Heliotrope during the 1910s and the boarding houses beginning in 1924. First, Tsuya and Tsuki Saku, and then their sons and wives ran the boarding houses until around 1980. And the Asawas were leaders in their community. They were one of the three main financiers of the Japanese Cultural Institute in the neighborhood and involved in Japanese prefectural organizations. Uh, they were also attended and financially supported the Japanese Presbyterian Church in the neighborhood. They were also very active. Um, they were also very active in the real estate market. Over the decades, they acquired eight properties in the neighborhood, um, as well as building the residences that currently stand here at uh, five six seven Commonwealth and here on the corner of Commonwealth and Clinton. Um, 
and the other properties we just got addresses for just a couple blocks away. Um, and there's more and more coming to light every day about the Asala family and their influence. And we hope that uh, one of the descendants will speak to that later today. Um, the subject property is rectangular and plain with uh, wood frame construction on lead sill foundation and wood clockwork sidings, very typical of these smaller boarding houses. Um, the two story portion is um, capped by a front facing uh, gable, which you cannot see in this slide, but I have further images. Um, and this primary west elevation is symmetrically arranged with a full length porch partially enclosed by a low porch wall and accessed by uh, concrete steps from the sidewalk. The windows are aluminum hung uh, with the original wood uh, framing and openings on both the front west side and then the north and south sides. There are security bars on the front windows and secu a security door. There is also a secondary entrance uh, via a deeply recessed vestibule on the south facing facade um, that leads into the main corridor, as well as you can see on the left, the original 1912 house with the Dutch gable roof. It retains its original door and window frames and openings, as well as some original um, sliding wood windows. Inside, you can see single rooms arranged along a central hallway with shared bathrooms, typical, again, um, of these boarding houses. Uh, the 1912 portion of the rear house is seen in the left photo, uh, houses the shared kitchen, as well as a bedroom that's been converted into an office manager space. Interior features include plaster walls, wood cabinetry, and partially glazed panel wood doors. Lastly, in the um, southeast corner of the lot is a shed is a garage with a shed roof, wood clockwork sidings, and a tilt-up door. Uh, there's no permit for the garage, but it is seen in the 1950 Sanborn map, so we know it's sometime before then. Uh, the alteration in history, there have been incredibly and very few alterations since 1927, when the second story of the building uh, was added. One noticeable change you can see is the replacement of wood shake for uh, composition shingles. We can also tell, even though there's no permit, that uh, the windows have been replaced but as I mentioned, the frames and openings remain the same and an original brick porch uh, has been enclosed at some point. I'll end with the Surveille findings who identified this building as one of eight extant boarding houses in the city. It again, along with 560 Virgil are the only remaining boarding houses to be used in both the pre and post-war period. And that continues today. 564 continues to provide affordable housing to Japanese tenants. Um, as you can see, this meets the criterion um, one and two for the reasons stated above. We urge you to take this property under consideration so that we can discuss its history more fully. Thank you. Thank you. A very good presentation. Very thorough. My compliments. Um, so our, I guess we're going to vote on each one of these separately, right, Lambert? Okay, I get, let's want yeah. to open up for public comment. Are there any questions, Commissioners, at this point? I have a question. This is Commissioner Kanner. I was wondering how these properties were brought to the attention of Hollywood Heritage. Is that an appropriate question? Yeah, I can speak to that if that's okay, Brian. Oh. Um, these buildings were sold um, very recently uh, in February of this year, and that was brought to uh, many people's attention by a local reporter in East Hollywood, Samantha Hello Hernandez. Um, and they were known in Survey LA and in popular knowledge uh, to be significant to the Japanese American community. Um, and then the LA Tenants Union has also helped bring this forward um, by looking at the situation that these um, remaining Japanese American tenants are in as uh, ownership and the building changes. Thank you so much. Okay, um, let's open it up for public comment. Yes, Diego Vasquez City Planning for item number six, uh, seven. Uh, simple instructions for public comment. If you dialed in telephonically and would like to give public comment, please press star nine and star six to mute, unmute. We have a few callers. Uh, Susan, Susan Perez, Ozoa Perez, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. You have one minute. <clears throat> Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 
Good morning, members of the Cultural Heritage Commission, and thank you so much, Brian and Lindsay, for all of your work. It's absolutely tremendous and encouraging and heartening. Um, I'm wondering if I can get two minutes of time if we're combining both of these items, six and seven, is that possible? No, you have to get one minute on each one. Okay, this is Kimberly Huang Fu, um, DCA. I just want to clarify, Susan, are you representing the ownership? Yeah, I'm a descendant. I'm Susan Ozawa Perez. I'm the granddaughter, great granddaughter of Sukisako and Suya Ozawa. Aren't you the former owner of the property? Co correct. Okay, so as you're not representing the owner. So you have one minute. I'm sorry. Your comment. Okay, thank you. I'm the great grand great granddaughter of Sukisako and Suya Ozawa, the previous owners owners and proprietors of the boarding house at 564 North Virgil. She, uh, George and Shizuka Ozawa were my great, sorry, my grand uncle and aunt, uh, longtime owners of the boarding house at 560 and 562 Virgil. Uh, my father and his brother and cousins spent much of their childhood at the boarding house as my grandmother Doris and my great aunt Shizuka staffed it. They cooked 30 meals three times a day for roughly 40 years. This boarding wow. house is a humble structure, but it's part of a larger story of a burgeoning middle class of Japanese immigrants at the turn of the century. Functioning as a stop for recent immigrants without family ties in the US, it housed, fed, and through its extension building, served as an employment agency seeking placement and the advancement of more recent immigrants from Japan. Later, it would become a place of refuge, community support, and economic advancement for the Japanese American community after World War II when our families were released from incarceration. This support and assistance was, essential, was central to our collective survival as formal employment for Japanese Americans was extremely limited due to discrimination. My family purchased this structure through capital raised through hard years of sharecropping in the San Joaquin Valley and from earnings from the fruit stand on Virgil Avenue, Roy's on Heliotrope and Melrose. The boarding house could have been lost during World, World War II when all those of Japanese descent, citizen and non-citizen were forcibly removed and given 48 hours. Bye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next caller. Catherine Goodis, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hi, my name is Kathy Goodis. I'm a professor of LA history and public history. I served on the mayor's civic committee, um, civic memory working group. Um, I just, I, I, I want to point out the connections between this property and what makes it significant and the prior presentation at the start of the commissioner's meeting uh, regarding transitional justice and also regarding the ways in which the civic memory working group recommendations uh, in particular in the labor section uh, address the fact that Survey LA um, didn't explicitly address labor history. This building is representative of labor history. Survey LA did call it out. It is an extraordinary example of the ways in which the city of Los Angeles was built upon the backs of so many different immigrant laborers. This one in particular focused on Japanese Americans. However, it serves to signify other groups as well. In particular, this long-standing pattern of housing, of serving as affordable housing, which is uh, at, so at risk within the city at large, in particular, this singular set of examples um, that, pre, that are pre-war as well as post-war. Thank you. Next caller. Caller Michelle G, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, President Barron and Commissioners. My name is Michelle McGollum and I'm President of Asian and Pacific Islander Americans and Historic Preservation. And I'm he here today in support of the HC nomination, HCM nomination of the Ozawa Boarding House and Obayashi Employment Center. We fully support city staff recommendations to take the property under further investigation as a potential HCM. So uh, this property is identified um, in the Japanese Americans in Los Angeles historic context for this uh, Survey LA citywide historic context statement, as it is a, a significant as a rare example of a Japanese boarding house from the pre-war uh, period. 
in Los Angeles and across the nation. Very few sites associated with Asian American history are designated landmarks at the local, state, and or national levels. If designated, this property would become the ninth or tenth, um, given its accompanying um, nomination of more than um, 1,100 uh, HCM designations in Los Angeles, which reflects the rich history and contributions of the Japanese American community in the region. Furthermore, this site reflects the importance of how immigrant groups have contributed not only to the city's history, but the nation's. So we strongly urge you um, to support the nomination of this, uh, of, of the Ozawa Building, Boarding House and Obayashi Employment Agency. Thank you. Next caller, caller Rosaline Sagara, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello, Rosalind Cesaro with the Los Angeles Conservancy to voice support for item seven, the Historic Cultural Monument nomination for the Ozawa Boarding House Obayashi Employment Agency. Identified in Survey LA's Japanese American Historic Context, this early multifamily residential building met the housing needs of Japanese Amer immigrants and Japanese Americans seeking to establish their lives in Los Angeles. Japanese boarding houses are rare physical reminders of the ways the Japanese American community formed networks of mutual support. My father, Sam Koji Sagara, was a resident of the Ozawa boarding house in the early 1960s. He recalls paying $5 a week for room and board and that most of his fellow boarders were gardeners and older than him. My father would eventually find other housing in the neighborhood. But his story illustrates how boarding houses served as anchors in Japanese American neighborhoods in the pre and post war period. We urge the commission to take this nomination under consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Alan Kumaro, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, my name is Alan Kumamoto, and uh, I have a personal bias because my grandfather came from Japan and tried to do farming in Tropico, which is Glendale. And uh, when he found it very difficult, it opened up a boarding house in Little Tokyo, California. And so he knows, I know the value from all the stories of boarding houses and how it helped the labor movement and how it helped the single males and so forth. And I lived in Silver Lake adjacent to the Virgil district. And so I know the uh, activities in the Japanese American community were centered around some of the churches and so forth. And the boarding houses provided housing for many, many single males uh, of the era. And so uh, I support this nomination for both the uh, boarding house and the employment. Next caller, we have the owner, uh, Maiten Metazi. You have been unmuted, please unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. we'll give you extra time since you're the owner of the property. Thank you, how much time do I have? How much would you like? Uh, maybe about three to four minutes should be fine. Yeah, I, I, want to fine. Say, I want to first say thank you to Lindsay, thank you to Susan, and everyone else who has chimed on um, to nominate uh, the property that I recently purchased for uh, historical preservation. Um, something I would like to tell you guys a little bit about the story. I actually <clears throat> live in the neighborhood as well, right up the street on Virgil. And when this property first came to market, the reason that I bought this, this building is because um, in the past, SRO buildings were, are what is known as today as co-living, which I'm sure a lot of you in the, in the community, uh, part of this group are familiar with co-living projects being built today. Um, I'm, I'm very pro co-living. I'm very pro SRO housing. I understand that this building has a lot of history behind it, which is actually the reason why I purchased it. Um, the previous owner, Kenkichi Matsuhisa, uh, when he was selling the building, he got a few offers for much more than what I offered, actually, a 
around three and a half to three million. And the reason he let me purchase the property was because my plan of buying this building was restoring it and keeping it as as what it is now, which is an SRO boarding house. So something that I want to let you guys all know is I'm very pro this nomination. I would like to work with everyone here to get this project approved so I don't have to be put in a position where I have to sell it to the next person. I am currently, I have a hard money loan on this property that I bought for a year. I have been through the city trying to get through plan check for almost four months now. I have gotten offers on the property for north of three and a half million dollars due to the due to the land size and what you can build there. So I really would like you your guys' help to kind of rush the process and and get us through plan check so we can start construction and start leasing out these bedrooms again and bringing affordable housing to the neighborhood. So thank you everyone for your time and, and I really hope that we can get this project moving. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your concerns. Uh, Commissioner Barron, we do not have more hands raised for this item. Okay, so I'm going to close the public comment period. Um, well, it seems very easy to me that we take this under consideration. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with our process, this is sort of the first step uh, in a series of steps uh, that the commissioners take. We first take it under consideration. Uh, two commissioners will go out for a site visit and then it will come back to us. Um, for further um, discussion. And then from there, if we decide to push it forward, it will go to uh, the plum committee of, of the council uh, for their approval and then on to the council. So uh, this is the first step. And I believe the next step. Any comments, commissioners? This is Commissioner Malofsky. Uh, I want to thank Hollywood Heritage for, for bringing this to you to our attention. I've lived in Silver Lake for over 30 years and was not aware of the, the Japanese history that sort of is immediately adjacent to my community. So I appreciate you know the opportunity to sort of be aware of that and sort of urge Hollywood Heritage to continue sort of expanding its, its mission beyond um, the entertainment industry and then looking for other opportunities like this in Hollywood. But I definitely support the nomination. This is Commissioner Kennard. I, I want to uh, echo what Commissioner Malaspi just said, and I'm so pleased. Typically, um, these these nominations come before us. If they have an ethnic focus, it's usually an ethnic group that brings the nomination forward. So the fact that Hollywood, Hollywood Heritage is recognized, this is really very commendable, and I, I urge you to continue to do this. This is also a story, and I grew up in, in Hollywood, actually and had many classmates at the local schools who were Japanese Americans. I didn't know, so I appreciate it. Do you have a motion? I like to think one, one quick comment before I make a motion, which is I think this also illustrates you know, the, the, the close relationship between the Civic Memory um, Task Force Commission or community and, and the uh, Cultural Heritage Commission. I think the two are very closely related and it sort of becomes part of our, our responsibility to sort of look to these opportunities uh, in the future. And with that, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, take under consideration the Ozawa Boarding House Obayashi Employment Agency at 564 to 564 and a half North Virgil Avenue and accept the staff report findings. Commissioner Kennard, I second. Roll call, please. Certainly. Commissioner Malofsky. Yes. Commissioner Kennard. Yes. Commissioner Canner. Yes. Commissioner Barron. Yes. So the motion passes. Okay, so now we're going to go backwards to item six. Yes, Commissioner. So item six is proposed nomination for the Joyce Boarding House Ozawa residence located at 560 to 562 North Virgil. The staff recommendation is that the commission take the property under consideration and adopt the staff report findings. And Lindsay Mulcahy will now present this property. Thank you, Lambert. Um, and thank you, commissioners, for uh, your support and your feedback. Um, again, I will, um, because I established the context for this building significance in the first presentation, now I'll just give a brief chronology of the building's history and then turn to its integrity. So here uh, is the building at 560 
North Ridgel, um, just immediately south of 564. And this building was also constructed in 1912 by Charles Ackerley, the same developer who built 564 Virgil as part of the early residential uh, development of the Dayton Heights tract. Um, by 1924, uh, Sachi Joy Yamaoka was the householder, uh, reflecting the growth of the Japanese presence in the neighborhood. He is listed in directories as a gardener and a laborer himself. And in 1921, as more Japanese immigrants moved to the neighborhood, he relocated his residence to the back, uh, which you can see here, and constructed a single story boarding house at the front of the lot. And through the 1920s, it also served as an employment agency under several different names, including Joy's Japanese Day Workers and the Sachi Yamao. Yamaoka Employment Agency. By 1927, it was owned by a man named Gio Mayakawa. Census records from 1930 list 19 boarders living at 560 Virgil, uh, most of whom were single middle-aged Japanese men. All but two were gardeners working in private residences. And in 1939, you can see it here listed in the New World Sun Yearbook as the Joyce Boarding House. Um, and the year prior, in 1938, uh, Georgia Sawa, who was and Suya's oldest son, um, living here at 564 Virgil, married uh, Shizuka Mochizuki, who lived next door at 560 Virgil. From our conversations with the Osawa family members, we believe that the Osawa has already owned 560 Virgil by this point, so in that early 1930s. And 560 Virgil was part of the Asawa's compound, um, as it has been called by family members, and again played a really crucial role as a reuniting point for family members um, incarcerated during World War II. In 1950, George Asawa converted the property into a duplex um, as the number of uh, Japanese laborers declined. And the family lived in the duplex while his wife, Shizuka, um, as well as uh, George's brother Joe and his wife Doris, as Susan mentioned, helped run the boarding house next door. 560 Virgil too then is tied to the development um, of the Japanese American community in the J. Fox neighborhood, the labor history of Japanese workers and gardeners, and a deep association with the Asawa family in both the pre and post-war period. Um, the boarding house at the front of the property is a one-story duplex characterized by a narrow rectangular plan oriented west towards uh, Virgil. It too is a wood frame construction on Midsill Foundation and the duplex has a hipped roof uh, with composition shingles. Um, you can see here the primary west facing uh, elevation has uh, stucco cladding and again an articulated roof line with a stud parapet. The facade is symmetrically arranged um, and it has a centered primary entrance accessed by a small staircase um, set beneath a projecting front facing porch gable supported by door columns. The door is wood, um, as are the windows, which are double, double hung. The remaining elevations uh, feature wood clockwork siding and hung and sliding aluminum windows of varying size, all with metal security grills. And there's a secondary entrance, although it's difficult to see um, on the north side of the building, which uh, comes out into this shared um, concrete patio between 564 and 560 Virgil. And the single family residence located at the rear um, is a regular in plan. Um, it too is wood frame construction with wood clobbered siding. Um, it has a front face uh, Dutch gable roof, and then you can see here on the south side this projecting um, shed roof, all with composition shingles. Uh, the primary entrance is off center and it has a wood door with a metal security door. It's right here, it's difficult to see behind this furniture. Um, and then north of the door is a set of paired metal doors here, uh, capped by a pent roof that was um, added later. There's also a secondary entrance on the west of the side. You can see it here behind the clothing line um, with uh, also its original wood door and metal security door on top. And again, um, the windows here are all original. 
um, as well as, as the doors, as well as their um, framing and openings. You can see that uh, demolition has occurred at the interior, um, but not to the character defining features. Uh, we want to make clear that the building retains its double loaded corridors and entry doors with their transoms. That is all intact. Um, since the boarding house was constructed in 1921, there have been uh, a handful of alterations. In 1927, you can see um, there was some plasterboard added and changing of windows. Um, and then in 1950, as we explained, uh, the boarding house was altered to make a duplex for the Asawa family. Um, you can see too that like 564, uh, the shingles have been changed. Um, there are also, uh, as we can see in 20, 2002, um, there was some unpermitted work that occurred sometime between um, 1950 and 2000 um, and a mandate from LADBS to return the property um, to a duplex. There too, at one point was a garage on the property um, as identified in the 1950 sandboard map, uh, probably very similar to the one at 564 Virgil, uh, but it is no longer extant. Um, again, it was, non, it was um, identified in the Survey Alley Japanese American Historic Context Statement as a rare example of a boarding house. Um, I want to conclude by, again, thanking the Commission, thanking all of um, the speakers who came out today in support of this uh, building for sharing your own personal histories. Um, this nomination and this narrative is a combination of all your voices, most significantly those with lived experience um, in the houses and in the neighborhood. So we want to thank again the Asawa family for sharing their incredible story, uh, as well as the, non the scholarship that this is built upon from the Survey LA Japanese Historic Context Statement, the Little Tokyo Historical Society, Kristen Hayashi, Rose, Rosalind Sagara on Japanese and Japanese American history, um, and the ongoing work of reporters Samantha Elu and Nandez about Japanese and African American solidarity in East Hollywood. Um, anything that we didn't cover, we're happy to cover in future presentations. Um, so I will conclude now. Thank you. I mute. Oh, I'm okay. Um, thank you, Lindsay. Um, <clears throat> Again, a very nice presentation. Um, you're you're very good at uh, presenting these historical uh, properties. Um, any questions, commissioners? Okay, let's open up for public comment. Diego Vasquez, City Planning, for item number six: simple instructions for public comment. If you dialed in telephonically and would like to give public comment. Please press uh, star nine and star six to unmute. We have a, we have a few callers. Su Susan Ozawa Perez, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. You have one minute. Please state your name for the record. Hi, this is Susan Ozawa Perez again. I wanted to continue my presentation. Um, family friends, the Ariolas, who are Mexican but American citizens, also held titles to my family's land um, during the Japanese alien land laws that were in place. The community of neighbors and friends were also key to Japanese American community survival and the continuity of this community in the face of incarceration. When Executive Order 9066 was declared and the Japanese were rounded up, Frank Box, a family friend and Sunday school teacher, took over the power of attorney for my family's properties in November 1942 during the war and returned the power of attorney to the Ozawas after the war. He paid the taxes and insurance on the properties so that they were never seized by the government like so many other Japanese properties. While, a hum while humble physical structures, these structures represent not only kinship ties and community ties that were legacies from the Shizuoka pre Prefecture in Japan, but they also represent a uniquely American story of frontier development, successful and painful community perseverance to create deep roots in a new country and to contribute to the American industrial advancement at the turn of the century. It also tells a story of cross-cultural mutual support and trust, which is the fundamental backbone of all community development and advancement through times of various historical antagonisms and hardships. Right. Thank you for your consideration and the opportunity to speak. Susan, I wish that you would um, submit your comments to the file. Uh, 
Okay, next speaker. Next caller, Alan Kuma Akumamoto. You have been unmuted. Please unmute. Uh, hi, this is Alan Kumamoto again. I'd, I'd like to again support this particular nomination since it has significance in the Japanese American community in the Virgil district. There are many people who left because of World War II and were incarcerated in Heart Mountain, Wyoming uh, at the concentration camp there. But some of the families like the Hoshizakis have returned. And I think it's a testament to that community to show that there are places and activities that took place prior to the war that this was a bustling Japanese American community which had many, many different faces. And of course, the um, particular location was significant from the standpoint of being a boarding house and having employment and also housing uh, some of the people in the local area. So thank you. Please uh, continue with the nomination. Next caller, caller 1669, you have been unmuted. You can unmute by pressing star six. Caller 1669, you have been unmuted. You can unmute by pressing star six. Go ahead. Hi, commissioners. Um, sorry, I, am, I was just waiting for item number eight. I pressed by accident. Sounds good. We'll, we'll call on you when the next item uh, is called. Next caller, caller Michelle. You have been, Michelle G, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello, commissioners. Again, this is Michelle Magalong, uh, president of Asian and Pacific Islander Americans in Historic Preservation. We are here in support of the uh, HCM nomination of the Joyce Boarding House Ozawa residents. So we hope uh, we, we support the city staff um, recommendation to take this property under further investigation as a potential H HCM, um, particularly as in Los Angeles and across the nation. There are very few sites associated with Asian American history that are designated at local, state, or national levels. Furthermore, this site reflects the importance of how immigrant uh, groups and uh, women of color have um, have contributed not only to the city but the nation's history of labor and ethnic entrepreneurship. This site was um, cited in the city's recent and award-winning Asian American in Los Angeles historic context statement, which is now listed on the National Register of historic places so we uh, strongly urge you and the commission to support the nomination and further consideration of the joyce boarding house ozawa resident as an hcm thank you next caller caller 4080 you have been unmuted please unmute by pressing star six <clears throat> hi it's elizabeth again from the hollywood art center I just want to thank all the callers and Hollywood Heritage for this nomination. Through my recent research, there is actually over 100 or so years of Japanese and Japanese American history on the east side, East Hollywood, which is Los Feliz, essentially. They were here at the turn of the century, and even when they were incarcerated, these families like the Ozawas came back, and they reestablished their communities despite being lost. Uh, despite losing everything they had, um, I've also done a lot of research on those art mountains. And I have a great many artists associated in Hollywood and in Hollywood with the Japanese American community. So it's very, very important that we continue recognizing these sites as part of our cultural past. They are, they are the hidden histories which we need to work harder as a city to uh, recognize and to promote as important historic and uh, cultural layers of these close-knit families and uh, various minorities that haven't been recognized. Thank you. Next caller, caller Rosalind Sagara, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello again, Rosalind Sagara with the Los Angeles Conservancy to voice support for item six, the historic cultural monument nomination for the Joyce Boarding House Ozawa residence. Identified in Survey LA's Japanese American historic context as eligible for listing as a rare example of a Japanese boarding house from the pre-war period. 
This property helps narrate Asian American and Pacific Islander labor history and also represents the stabilization and growth of the Japanese American community as experienced by the Ozawa family. This property adds to our understanding of pre and post war development of the Madison J. Flats neighborhood in East Hollywood. We urge the commission to take this nomination under consideration. Thank you. Next caller, caller Catherine Gudis. Do you have been unmuted? Please unmute. Hi, uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, my name is Kathy Gudis, and I live close to the properties in question. I support their nomination as rare, intact examples of what other residents and some of the commissioners here um, address as the relatively invisible histories of Japanese Americans in the neighborhood. The Joyce Boarding House as our residents are really moving, palpable examples, and I drive by it all the time, and I'm moved when I look at it. Now I have many more of the personal stories through the research that folks have done from Hollywood Heritage and the family members. But these are palpable examples of how the physical structures serve as markers of the challenges faced by Japanese and Japanese Americans in terms of land ownership, exclusionary actions by dominant culture regarding rights of citizenship, as well as rights to, uh, to reside uh, by choice, which was restricted both through economic opportunities being limited and the rights to own land being limited. And so I think that in terms of this being a palpable reminder, this is an important site that I hope you'll take into consideration. I also want to point towards the fact that the properties also call forth the um, important histories in terms of labor, uh, where Joy's Japanese day workers and other employment agencies became incredibly important for community members to be able to sustain themselves in the kinds of day work that was quite limited yet allowed their survival. Thank you so much for your consideration. Commissioner Barron, we do not have any more hands raised for this item. You could close public comment. Okay, I will close the public comment period. Um, well, this is, uh, you know, um, same as the previous one, I believe. And uh, they kind of go together. I'm supportive of this. I think this sort of works into some of the things we've been hearing today. So, um, any comments from the commissioners? Mr. Malosky, you usually have a comment. No, I, I, I agree. I think this, this is closely tied to the one we just uh, moved forward. And I think uh, anything we can do to sort of increase the visibility of the history of the Japanese American community in, in Los Feliz, East Hollywood, uh, is, is, should be encouraged. This is Commissioner Kennard. I move that we take the property, the Joyce Boarding House Azawa residence at 560-562 North Virgil under consideration and adopt the staff report finding. I'll second that, we'll, Commissioner Cameron. Roll call, James. James, where'd James go? There he is. He's muted. <coughs> James, you're muted. You're muted, you're muted James. James, you're muted. There we go. Thank you. I have uh, <laughs> two uh, uh, mute. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Commissioner Kennard. Yes. Commissioner Canner. Yes. Commissioner Malos. Yes. Commissioner Barron. Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Do we need to take a five minute break? I need a two minute break. Well, why don't we take a three minute break? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Barron, I have to notify you that I do have to leave at 2.15. Okay, uh, hopefully, uh, well, I don't uh, know. Uh, this next uh, one is kind of going to be a little bit longer. It might be long, yes, it might be long. But You're going to have a Korean translator right. and who knows how much that time that's going to take. Okay. So we'll do what we can, Gail. Okay, thank you. Three minute, three minute break. So back here at uh, one thirty eight.
Okay, 139. Missing Commissioner Canner. Here she comes. Okay, we're going on to item eight. Now it's my understanding that there's going to be a Korean interpreter associated with this part, this, this uh, application and presentation. Now is the Korean interpreter only going to be interpreting Public comment. Can anyone answer me that? No, I believe I have the answer. Melissa, I don't know if you've heard anything specifically. Was it for public comment or to translate the entire presentation? This is Melissa. This is Melissa Jones in the Office of Historic Resources. It's my understanding that it will just be public comment. Um, and I believe that the translator is going to read instructions um, before we start the public comment period. And James can confirm that. So the, the translator, if there are Korean individuals who are speaking in Korean that, that wish to make public comment, the translator will translate them into English for the commissioners. Is that my understanding? That is just my understanding. Make, I just want to make sure I understand what the ground rules are before we begin this. Because I think this is, I think in all my time here, I think this is the first uh, presentation with a translator. This is it not? So the typical protocol is each speaker who opts for the translator will give, be given double that amount of time. So if you're doing well, one minute for general public comment, they get two minutes to allow time for the translator. Well, a minute for the person and a minute for the translator. Uh, Correct. They get two minutes for both, and so typically they'll say one sent. The individual speaker will say one sentence, and then the translator will translate, and then they'll go back and forth like that for two minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sentence by sentence, or however the translator feels comfortable translating the comments, but they'll get. But we'll put two minutes on the time frame for that particular speaker who speaks in Korean. Correct. Okay. All right, so item eight. Okay, yes, commissioners, item eight is proposed monument nomination for the Hung Sedan, located at 3421 to 3423 South Catalina Street. The staff recommendation is that the commission take the property under consideration and adopt the staff report findings. And I believe we have Rosalind Segarra from the Conservancy and Catherine Kim to present the nomination. Thank you, Lambert. Um, a couple things. I just want to make sure that my co-presenter, Catherine, can be promoted to panel. As she said, she's been raising her hand. Um, she'll be joining later. And then, um, um, commissioners, may I request um, one additional minute? Um, so I think we could complete in 11 minutes. Sure. James Williams, okay. city planning. Um, Ms. Agarra, before you get started, um, could you give us a little bit more information about Catherine? Is that Catherine with the K, Catherine with the C? I so think I see her here. Hands. Go ahead. I'm on right now as a panelist. It's Catherine with a K. Oh, then you're oh. fine. You're already set. Okay. I was looking. I was having the same tro uh, trouble on my end. Thank you, James. Okay, great. I'll get started. Um, and I think um, Melissa will be advancing slides. Yes, I will share the screen. Just give me one second. And you guys will tell me when to advance. Yes. I'm ready whenever you OK. OK, great. Thanks. Um, good afternoon, Nancy. On behalf of the Conservancy and Asian and Pacific Islander Americans in Historic Preservation, 
I'm pleased to present the Historic Cultural Monument nomination for the Hung Sedan, located at 3421 to 3423 South Catalina Street in South Los Angeles. Next slide. The subject property is comprised of a craftsman style two-story residence from 1910 and a two-story duplex and detached garage from the 1950s. On the left is a Sanborn map showing the property in its earliest building in its neighborhood context in 1922. And to the right is an aerial view of the property today. Next slide. The subject property pictured here in 1937 meets criteria one and two for designation as a historic cultural monument with a period of significance from 1929 to 1979, reflecting the period of use by the Hasidan organization. Since our application was deemed complete, we discovered new information documenting the organization's use of the property as early as 1929 and through 1979 and have thus updated the period of significance. Next, um, Catherine will be. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Catherine Kim. I'm the author of Los Angeles's Koreatown and a contributor to this survey, LA Asian Americans in Los Angeles historic context statements, specifically the Korean Americans in Los Angeles context in which the Hung Sada building is listed as a designated known and historic resource. Currently, I'm the senior editor at the Koreatown Youth and Community Center. Pictured here is An Chang Ho, also known by his pen name Do San, renowned Korean patron and leader of the Korean independence movement after Korea was annexed by Japan in 1910. An arrived in the US in 1902 with his wife, Heron Helen Lee. They were the first married Korean couple to emigrate to the United States and their arrival to this country predated the first boatload of Korean immigrants to the U.S. by three months. An and his family lived in the Bunker Hill area of Los Angeles in the early 1900s. An was the founder of the Young Korean Academy. Next slide, please. Helen An is photographed with three of her children at their first town in Los Angeles in Bunker Hill. Her son, Philip, was the first person of Korean descent born in the United States, and her other children are among the first Koreans born in Los Angeles. Helen was either the second or third woman of Korean descent to emigrate to the United States and was a significant, yet historically unrecognized leader and matriarch of the Korean community in Los Angeles from the, from the early 1900s, when the on Home served as a boarding house and a social service center for many early Korean immigrants. She is seated prominently in many of the historical annual images of the Young Korean Academy, which we will show later in the presentation. Next slide, please. The An family house, a large Victorian on Bunker Hill, is on the top right of the image. The address is 106 North Figueroa Street, but is now located near Angel's Flight. This photo is circa 1915. Next slide, please. The 18th Annual Assembly of Hong Sedan Young Korean Academy at the University of Southern California in what is now the Sealy Winter Smith Mud Memorial Hall of Philosophy. By the 1930s, many Koreans in Los Angeles had relocated to an area near Jefferson Boulevard and Catalina Street where communities of color resided due to racially restrictive real estate covenants. Also, several second-generation Korean Americans and international students from Korea were active participants. Next slide, please. This map, pictured at left, hand-drawn by Yin Kim, pictured at right, was drawn in the 1990s to depict the family homes and institutions of the Korean American community near Jefferson Boulevard, old Koreatown, circa 1920s to 1940s. Circled in red is the Young Korean Academy. On the top left with the cross is the Korean Press Cultural Monument. And to the right is Tommy Trojan to give an idea of the proximity to USC. This photo of Yen Kim from 1930 shows him in his letterman sweater from Fashe Junior Middle School, located at Western and Exposition just west of USC. Many of the second generation Korean Americans in Los Angeles attended middle school there. Next slide, please. 
This is the dedication of the Korean National Association Building Historic Cultural Monument Number 548 on April 17, 1938. The building is right next door to the Korean Presbyterian Church, which was built around the same time and opened for service on May 1, 1938. An Chang Ho was also the founder of the Korean National Association, the leading governing body for Koreans in America and for Korean independence. Today, the building is the KNA Memorial Foundation, which houses a museum dedicated to the history of the old Koreatown community and the independence movement in the US. Of note, there were around 500 Korean Americans in Los Angeles in the late 1930s. Back to Rosalind, next slide, please. In 1930, An Chang-ho founded Hang Sedan, also known as the Young Korean Academy in San Francisco. The organization's mission was to build civic and political leadership capacity for Korean independence movement from J Japanese colonial rule. Beyond the goal of independence, An's teachings promoted Korean sovereignty through democracy. Its membership was very consistent day laborers, farm workers, and shopkeepers, as well as ambassadors and diplomats. When An and his family moved to Los Angeles in 1914, Hang Sedan's headquarters moved with him. It originally operated out of their residence at 1411 West 4th Street, then by 1917 at 106 North Figueroa Street, pictured here. Both of these properties are no longer extant. Next slide. On November 7, 1929, Hung Sedan placed an ad in the New Korea newspaper, announcing the new address of its headquarters at 3421 South Catalina, the image on the right. The article on the left confirms the organization had first rented the residence on Catalina, then purchased it for $2,500 in 1932. The article which would be put to community use. Next slide. Um, Sanan's membership grew as the Korean community began expanding and coalescing southward in the neighborhood surrounding USC in the 1920s and 30s. USC students, both second generation Korean Americans and international students from Korea joined the Hang Sedan membership. Men and women alike were welcome to join the organization, reflecting on aggressive views and belief that gender equality would contribute to better outcomes for society at large. Aung um, Sedan served as a political voice following liberation in 1945 and the founding of the Republic of Korea, now South Korea in 1948. South Korea experienced political and social turmoil in the 50s to the 1980s due to the Korean War and subsequent authoritarian rule which ran counter to Hang Sedan's core philosophies. The organization's focus turned to promoting de democratic governance through education and study of An Chang Ho's teachings, which were believed to be universal and applicable in a variety of political contexts. Regular guest speakers stopped by the Hang Sedan headquarters to lecture on various political and philosophical topics. The An family remained actively engaged with the organization. In the photograph on the left, Helen An is pictured in 1949, seated in the center of the first row. Behind the group is a framed portrait of her husband, An Chang Ho, whose teachings inspired generations of Hang Sedan members. Next slide. Given discrimination in employment and lack of opportunities to purchase property, the economic situation for many Korean immigrants in the community was dire, particularly as they grew older. One of Hang Sedan's functions was to provide housing assistance to members who needed it, particularly local university students and elder founding members. The craftsman style residence housed the organization's meeting room, office, a kitchen, and rooms for rent. In 1958, the organization built a two-story duplex to the rear of the existing building pictured on the right. This building would provide housing for elder founding members of the organization. Next slide. Few historic places associated with the history and contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are represented in the city's monument program, about 1.6 of all HCM citywide, with only three representing Korean American heritage. This nomination helps to increase the representation of BIPOC heritage sites in the HCM program. Next slide. 
In closing, Ralph An, the youngest son of An Chang Ho, provided a letter of support for the nomination in which he shares, quote, my father's vision and hope for young Koreans in America was fulfilled through the Young Korean Academy. The Hang Sedan building served as a focal point for Korean Americans who supported the independence of our homeland, engaged in community service activities, and worked for the betterment of their community. Hang Sedan served as an important social and cultural hub at the subject property from 1929 until 1979, when it was sold by the organization for financial reasons. The organization remains active today through its 35 chapters in South Korea, the US, and elsewhere in the world. Thank you for your attention. This concludes our presentation. Okay, thank you. Any questions, commissioners? Mr. Commissioner, can I, did we have a translation on what Hong Sedan uh, uh, means? Was that part of the presentation? I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry, I missed it. Hong Sedan is loosely translated as Young Korean Academy. Thank you. Yeah, let's open it up for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for public comment. Diego Vasquez, City Planning for item number for, no, for item number eight, simple instructions for public comment. If you dialed in telephonically and would like to give public comment, please press star nine and star six to unmute. Commissioner Barron, this is Melissa Jones in the Office of Historic Resources. I know we do have an owner's representative um, present. Did you want to take their call before general public comment? Sure. Okay, it is Daniel Friedman who is online and also he's calling in on the phone as well because he said his speaker doesn't work. So it's, I think it's the number ending in 5391. Sounds good. I just identified him. I will unmute him. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. You have been unmuted. Please unmute by pressing star six. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, hello everyone. So nice to see you all. Um, glad we've coming out of this <laughs> pandemic after so many, so many months, almost years now. So uh, hi, uh, my name is Daniel Friedman um, with the law offices of the Jeffrey Mengels Butler and Mitchell, myself and uh, Ben Resnick represent the property owners. Um, first off, um, we want to raise a concern with the timing of this nomination. Um, our, our client purchased the property about a year ago now and purchased it with the express intent of providing a TOC development with affordable housing to provide housing for, for the community, affordable housing, and as well as housing for the students nearby. And the, the timing uh, is, is concerning. The property was listed for, for months before this nomination ever went through and our client did their due diligence. They not only did they check the city's survey LA program, they also reached out to the city directly um, and city planning to confirm it wasn't historic. And I, I've submitted records uh, via our letter yesterday uh, showing that. And I, it just is very concerning that if this, you know, building, uh, it has obviously has been there for so long, it raises concerns to, to me as it should for you that if we have historic places in LA for a reason, to give people notice. So people know when they're purchasing properties, whether they are buying a potentially historic resource. And this one, this building was not on there. Secondly, we do have some concerns with respect to the criteria and the application of the criteria for this building. And we just ask that the commission, you know, obviously give it um, the, the, the scrutiny uh, it does to, to all applications that come before you. Um, we have concerns with criteria two in particular uh, in terms of its association with uh, Dosen on Chang Ho. Um, we, um, we definitely respect the, 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 the intent of the nomination and the, um, obviously um, the work of the individual um, and his importance, but we do have some concerns about whether it meets the strict criteria of its association um, with him. Um, with respect to criteria one, we just asked the, we do believe that additional information really needs to be provided to, to understand whether it fulfills the requirements of criteria one. Um, the criteria one really requires that the building emphasize and illustrate the 
co- contribution to the broad cultural uh, uh, aspects of our of our community. And I do believe there are some questions that are not answered here with respect to why the wh- why the Hung San Hung Sa Don organization left. Um, where they left to? Are there other locations they operated out of um, at the same time? Are there other ways of memorializing and honoring the contribution uh, of this of this group in this community? Well, these are issues which we believe could be uh, further analyzed uh, and and should be um, uh, considered if this if this nomination moves forward. With that said, I, I do want to uh, encourage the uh, commission to consider uh, the really unfair circumstance that our client and the owner has been put into as a result of this very late nomination. And we, we do believe that um, based on the nomination itself, um, this, as it stands today, uh, this nomination should not move forward to designation. Thank you so much for your time. I haven't seen you in a while, Mr. Friedman. Well, I, I don't think we've seen many people in a while. <laughs> we've been here. We've been Zooming all the time. I know. Well, it's nice to see your faces. I can't wait to see y'all at City Hall soon. Yeah, who knows when that's going to be? Ken, Ken's smiling in a way where I don't think he wants to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we enjoy we enjoy you very much, you know. You know. So, okay, I uh, wish you well, and uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. We do, uh, Commissioner Barron, we do have a neighborhood council, so I'm going uh, to uh, choose to um, click on Jean, uh, Jean Frost for her neighborhood council pres- uh, statement. Okay. Jean Frost, you have been unmuted. Please unmute on your end. Jean Frost, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, commissioners, for your patience. Uh, my name is Jean Frost. I'm uh, politically active and planning and preservation, but today I am represent- representing uh, the Neighborhood Council for this area, the Empowerment Congress North, uh, often called NANDEC. And the board met on July 1st at its duly noticed uh, public hearing and public meeting uh, and reviewed uh, the, the application. We strongly urge the commission to take this under consideration. Um, it was a unanimous vote by uh, the entire elected representatives and we do represent a very diverse and a very committed neighborhood in which uh, this this uh, parcel is cited. Uh, we think the research has been excellent by uh, Michelle Magalong, who chronicled many waves of Korean immigration and specifically how the Korean Youth Academy uh, ties into the history of Korean Americans in the neighborhood council area and its association with Ahn Chang Ho. Um, this was also, I believe, recognized by SHPO in the uh, Korean American uh, overall context statement as eligible for the National Register. So uh, there is a whole background of its, of its historic importance. Um, we urge you to take this under consideration. Uh, this property changed hands in April of uh, 2020. There is no TOC or, or uh, PAR uh, request uh, under consideration by the city at this time. It's entirely appropriate and it's beneficial to the neighborhood as a whole and all of its stakeholders to take this very important building under consideration so that um, part of the area of the of NANDEC can be recognized for its importance. Uh, we've developed even a task force that has recognized that uh, not enough research has been done in South Los Angeles and our particular area of South Los Angeles. Um, this is a very important, very significant building, and I urge you to take it under consideration on behalf of the Neighborhood Council and its stakeholders. Thank you.
Commissioners, just before we go to public comment, if I may, I did want to just jump in and uh, put one uh, uh, item on the record re referencing something that was in Mr. Friedman's comments. Uh, he did note that the property in question is not uh, identified in Survey LA and in historic places, listed in historic places LA when that is searched and when uh, that was queried with our staff. Um, and that is the case. Survey LA did wrap up in 2017. Subsequent to that, as you know, we did do a great deal of additional work on uh, many of our um, ethnic and cultural historic contexts, including the five Asian Americans in Los Angeles historic context that included the uh, Korean American context that uh, Catherine Kim, Rosalind Sagar, and many other um, leaders and experts worked, upon, worked on. Um, this property was identified in that context. We are um, still in the process, just as it took quite some time to add the massive amounts of data from Survey LA to uh, be fully reflected in Historic Places LA. We are still in the process of adding the data from those more recently completed contexts uh, as part of our uh, most recent upgrade works on work on Historic Places LA. That's been a high priority for our office. So before too long, all of that additional data will be in the system, fully searchable and mappable, and just wanted to um, set the record straight on that. And just to, to add on to that, this is Shannon Ryan. The Korean American context statement, though, is online. That that report, which identifies this site, the report itself as a as a PDF. Um, so the, the information is available online, even though uh, the data from that report is not yet in historic places. So, uh, yeah. At this moment, can I have uh, Sarah Kim press star six on her phone, just uh, and state her rec uh, name for the record? That would be our Korean interpreter. Diego, I see her listed as a panelist. Okay. Um, to unmute. She could do that on her end uh, if that's so, if, if that's so. Um, okay, sounds good. We'll definitely go go ahead uh, go ahead with the callers. Thank you. This this is Melissa Jones. Sorry, I, I think you're confusing. There's Catherine Kim that's on the panel. I see a, a Sarah Kim that's still listed. True. In the attendees. Okay. And were there instructions that she was going to read in, in Korean? James Williams, uh, city planning. Um, so we were going to have uh, Diego uh, give the call in instructions in English and ask her to repeat them in Korean. And so uh, we do need to hear from Sarah Kim. Please unmute your phone. Uh, at this time, uh, you've been unmuted on our end, and we just need you to state your um, uh, state uh, the services that you are providing for the record. So I'm gonna go ahead and give simple instructions. Uh, Diego Vasquez, City Planning. Um, item number eight: Simple instructions. Uh, if you dialed in telephonically and would like to give public comment, please press star nine and star six to unmute. You could go ahead, uh, Sarah Kim. No, we're not getting anything. Um, so should I go ahead with the callers at this point or should we just wait till Sarah Kim could connect or? I see Sarah listed uh, as a panelist um, and uh, perhaps it's just having difficulty on muting. Perhaps she can uh, try logging back in um, and we can, go, we can go ahead perhaps with the beginning of public comment and when she's able to log back in, have her repeat back the uh, instructions in Korea. That is so weird that you would see her as a panelist. I see her as an attendee. Yeah, I do. I, that, that is the same problem. I'm, uh, I'm conflicted right now. I do see her as an attendee, but not as a panelist. Mm 
James Williams City Planning, um, if it is the president's desire, we can move forward with comments uh, from visitors who do not require uh, Korean interpretation uh, to make their comments to the commission. Uh, so those who uh, do need uh, the interpretation, uh, we could put those on hold and then we could take the ones that do not. It's up to the uh, commission president. Uh, we're online with the uh, corporation uh, that employs the translator and we're trying to uh, um, reconnect with her. Yeah, let's go ahead and take uh, English speaking uh, uh, people who wish to comment uh, at this point. And if you are a Korean speaking person and need a translator, uh, please um, don't um, don't participate in the um, in the comment period until we get our translator up and up and running. We hope they understand what you just said. <laughs> No worries. We'll go ahead right now. How's your Korean, Diane? <laughs> Chris, we have any Korean? Well, well maybe um, can one of the, the present the presenters, Rosalind, or I knew you were uh, going to ask. I was born in New Jersey. I'm I'm not, I'm not fluent in Korean. Oh, Rosalind has her hand up, so I think we may have um, a translator available. We do have a backup translator, a community member who's available to translate right now, um, if she's allowed. Hedja Kim. Thank you. So we should promote uh, that individual. I assume that individual needs to be promoted to panelist. Hi, Rosalind. Could I have her name one more time? Hedja Kim. H E A J A Kim. I see a chain cake him. Hello, this is Heja Kim. Okay, I'll call out the first option. There is. Oh. Well, that feedback is coming from someone who has a computer or a device that is turned up too loud. All right, that seems better. Could the angle yeah. seem Hey, Joe, this is Melissa Jones from the Office of Historic Resources. Do you have another device playing this meeting or something in the background that's interfering? It, typically, that's when there's both computer and telephone logged in at the same time. I think it was that last caller because now they're not on the line and the sound has gone away. So, here we go. So, uh, Ms. Kim, please unmute your um, phone or uh, device. And uh, when, when Diego gives the uh, instructions, if you don't mind, uh, please be kind to repeat the instructions uh, to our callers, um, okay. and then we'll begin. Okay, Diego? I'll do that. I'll take it away from now. Uh, thank you, James. Diego Vasquez, City Planning, for item number eight, instructions, if you dialed in telephonically, and would like to give public comment, please press star nine and star six to unmute. 만약에 전화로 public comment를 하시고 싶으면, uh, star... 9를 누르시고 star 6을 누르셔야지 발언을 하실 수 있습니다. Thank you. For caller Christopher H K Lee, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Christopher H K Lee, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Good afternoon. Yes, proceed. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Christopher Iskd. I am an architect uh, and also a researcher and a documentary filmmaker. Uh, I do a lot of uh, filming because of uh, 
uh, preserving our important history of our Korean heritage and legacy. And I support the nomination of our preserving the uh, the Hongsadan because uh, it is a very important part of the history, not only for Korean American community, but also for all of our immigrants in the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Excuse me, Commissioner Barron. I uh, must excuse myself. This is Commissioner Kennard. James Williams, oh, City okay. Planning. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll note that for the record. Take thank care. You. Oh, you're, oh, you're leaving the commission. That's right. Okay. All right, Gil. Thank you. Thank you. Next How are they going to do Young this? Lee, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello, um, my name is Ji Young Lee. Um, I'm a second generation of Korean American, uh, 25 years old. Um, I work as a producer at uh, Care Project, uh, making documentary films regards to important history. Uh, I would like to share a small uh, story of myself. Um, when I was young, uh, as a child, my mom used to take me to all these cultural uh, museums in Los Angeles and uh, one day, uh, she took me to Japan, a uh, Japanese uh, museum, and I was very fascinated about all the historical monuments and the his uh, the stories. So I asked my mom, uh, "Mom, uh, can you take me to a Korean museum?" And I still remember the face of my mom. Uh, she was being speechless because she didn't know where to take me. And uh, this is a very important thing for the younger generation because. Um, I was very confused as a child because I didn't know what my identity was. Um, I didn't know where I came from. So uh, this is a very important thing because uh, this younger generation's heart has to be filled with purpose in life. And this purpose comes from knowing the sacrifices and hardships given by the elder generations. And uh, this Hung Zadan is one of the oldest buildings uh, existing in uh, USA, and I really support the uh, nomination of um, preserving this monument for the young generations. Thank you. Moving on. Yao Xin Yun, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Yoshin Yoon, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Yes. 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 대한민국의 독립 운동을 위한 흥사단의 본부 건물이었습니다. 1945년 이후 1948년까지는 흥사단 uh, so far, um, what I've heard was, uh, hello, this is Yoon Hyo Shin. I'm the chairwoman of Korean National Association Memorial Foundation. Um, uh, I'm sorry. The headquarters of Sada located at 3421 South Carolina Street. Uh, contributed to Korean independence movement from 1932. Okay. Uh, 되어 앞으로 차세대들에게 한인 역사 교육의 산신으로 남을 수 있도록 도와주십시오. 감사합니다. The building served as the headquarters of the Hunsadan uh, from 1945 to 1978. I'm sorry, uh, US uh, headquarters. 
and uh, was home to uh, Korean American uh, education, uh, Korean American immigration history. Uh, so she hopes that the the head Hyung uh, building uh, becomes nominated as LA City's uh, historical cultural monument so that it can uh, be a place where the next generation of Korean Americans can learn about their history. Uh, thank you. That's it. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next caller. Yo, Shin Yoon, you have been at, uh, no. Diego? Yes. Okay. yes sir. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Could we unmute uh, Sarah and ask her to uh, present again? Sarah Kim, our translator, it appears that she has returned. Can we see if she's connected? Yes, Sarah Kim, um, can you press star six to unmute? Sarah Kim, you have been unmuted on my end. I need you to unmute on your end by pressing star six. Sarah Kim. You have been unmuted on my end. Okay, I'm gonna definitely move on with the next caller. Young King Pong, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Young King Hong, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Unmute. Oh, yes. You can proceed. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Young Bi Hong. I'm the chairperson for uh, Dosan Anchang Memorial Foundation. And I'm happy to be here and uh, uh, talking about Hung Zadan. Hung Sadan is a mecca of all Korean American living here in the United States. And they are also, you know, fought for the um, Korean independent movement and uh, without, uh, without the fighting, actually. Uh, but I think the Hung Sadan is uh, the power everybody uh, in a few things that is first of all they taught us honesty integrity compassion and uh, above all share on and the pitch Hung Zadan taught us you know i used to attend Hung Zadan seminars in 1956 while i was attending school here at the ucla and uh, you know i was greatly impressed by the uh, what they taught and those memories are still lingers on. I think this is the building, not only uh, historic and the cultural. Caller, Me John Conovac, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello. Proceed. Yes. Yes.
Hi, my name is Mi Jung Bonakov. I'm a parent of three children and a Korean language teacher at the Heritage Korean School. I was at the Korean National Association Memory Hall when the urgent press meeting was held with many Korean community leaders and the Korean reporters. As a parent and a teacher, I strongly request you to approve the nomination of the Hung Sa Dan building as a historic cultural monument for Korean American migrant communities. This site is a symbol of this country that promotes diversity, equity, and inclusion for everyone in this land. This building is a historical evidence that America supported newly arrived Korean migrants to educate themselves, to recover their motherland's freedom, as well as to act as a knowledgeable community members to pay forward back to the community where they belong at that time. Please approve this Hung Sa Dan as a historical cultural monument in Los Angeles for locals, this California state, at this country and for Korea. I'm here, uh, thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Hey, young, young men, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hey, young, young men, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hey, young, young men, you have been unmuted. Unmute on your end. Moving on. Excuse me. Hi, Jakim. Yes. Uh, do you mind repeating the instructions? I will, I will do that. Yes. Min Myung, Myung Si, unmute 해주세요. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, my name is Pyong Young Min. I'm the executive director of the Korean American History Museum. I came to the United States in 1973, and from 1974 to 1990, I was a journalist of the Korea Times. At that time, so many, many, I went to the Hung Sa Dan headquarters. I interviewed many Korean American pioneer and uh, Hung Sa Dan old member. And I hear the independent movement. And I put the article in the Korea Times more than 10 years. And after that, I published the English and the Korean language book about the Korean the pioneer and the Hung Sa Dan headquarters they work for them. And almost last 20 years, I'm the guide to the Korean the historical site in the Korean community. So many, many times I went to the Hung Sa Dan headquarters. I explained their wonderful the independent movement, all their contribution to the United States. Hi. And right now, the KNA Memorial Hall is the, the historical and cultural the monument 548. Hi. And another Hung Sa Dan more important than so I wish to uh, nominate as the historical site. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next caller, Billy Two Eight Nine Nine. You have been unmuted. Please unmute on your end. Billy Seo Shi, unmute you say. My name is Seok Young Won, and I'm the head of Hung Sa Dan USA. Seok Young Won Shi, one sentence, and stop it. I'm going to translate it. Today, I'm going to translate the entire thing. Hung Sa Dan building is preserved in its original condition, even as today. 110년 동안 아름답게 간직해온 건물입니다. This uh, building was preserved beautifully for 110 years. 건축 양식이 고전적 스타일의 도포한 모양으로 로스앤젤스에서 보기 드문 양식의 건물입니다. 
uh, this building is built in classical style, um, rare uh, architectural style found in, uh, in LA. 우리 홍사단 단소가 깊이 있고 현재 모습 그대로 유지되기를 전폭적으로 지지합니다. I support the preservation of Hang Sadan building in its original glory and I support it wholeheartedly. 감사합니다. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. Caller Jung Jo. You have been unmuted. Please unmute. Jung Jo, she unmute his hair. Katanga Hong Sadan Tanzan, Ilke Kam Kam Jongi Shire, Biju Tongi Bundongi, Jung Shinji or Sindo. Hong Sadan, Takamanyo, Hong Sadan building was the center of uh, Korean independence movement against Japanese imperial power. Tongi Buru and it was also a place where uh, we developed leaders for the Korean independence movement. Uh, uh, we would like to preserve Hung uh, Sadan, which is a, a great historical importance uh, for our posterity, and it's also our responsibility to do so. I believe that this place has to be designated as a historical uh, cultural monument as a place where Korean Americans uh, wage their uh, resistance against a Japanese imperialism. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Next caller. Caller. Jay Hoon Han, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Han Jae Hoon, she unmute. Hey, Jusail. Jay Hoon Han, you have been unmuted. Han Jae Hoon, she unmute. Yes, sir. I don't need to say. Moving on. Next caller. Next caller, June Hawk Lee. You have been unmuted. Please unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Mr. Okay. I'm Jay Hong Lee, uh, president of Hung Sadan Los Angeles branch. And I, I urge you to approve the nomination of Hung Sadan building as a historic cultural monument. 108 years ago, Hung Sadan started in California and continues to prosper. It's grown from one branch in California to 12 branches in the entire United States. Please approve the nomination in order to save not only one, only an important Korean American landmark, but also an important man in American history as his status as an immigrant country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next caller, Michelle G, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hi, commissioners. Uh, again, this is Michelle Mugolong, president of the API HIP, uh, one of the co-applicants of this nomination. As you can tell, um, this nomination is a testament to the community's um, 
collective work on addressing the issues of invisibility of uh, Asian American historic sites um, and the city's efforts, right? Us, uh, you know, with the context statements. Um, and so I wanted to just provide remarks on, on the application um, that particularly as Ken had mentioned earlier, um, that this site was noted um, in Survey LA's Korean Americans in Los Angeles historic context statement um, and was deemed eligible for local landmark designations in that historic context statement. Um, this statement, a uh, context study was built upon the extensive but not exhaustive work of the Office of Historic Resources, Historic Places LA and Survey LA work. Subsequently, the context uh, study was developed and written by preservationists and Asian American community members with extensive community outreach work um, in identifying and documenting historic and cultural resources important to our communities. Um, this included an advisory comprised of Asian American community leaders and academics like myself and was Hi. an award-winning context statement that is now Hi. listed on the National Register. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, Connor. Honor David, you have been unmuted. Please unmute on your end. Good afternoon. My name is David Yu, and I'm a professor of Asian American Studies and History at UCLA. I speak in strong support of item eight to be recognized as a historic cultural monument. By way of context, I served on an advisory committee for the Survey LA Asian American and Korean American Historic Context Statements. As has been noted, An Chang Ho, a pioneering figure in Korean American history, founded the Hunsadan for the Young Korean Academy, and his family and members have been pillars of the community to this day. I think in the larger context, the Catalina Street buildings were the heartbeat of an organization and community where countless meetings and events were held and where laborers and students were housed. Designation as an HCM would help to reclaim the crucial part of Korean American and Asian American history in the city of Los Angeles. We have far too little of that and so this represents an important opportunity thank you thank you next caller james on you have been unmuted please unmute hello commissioners can you hear me yeah. yes uh, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is James Ahn, and I am the president or the current president of the Korean American Federation of Los Angeles. I'd uh, first like to uh, thank our presenters uh, for such a beautiful presentation on the Hong Zedan building. Uh, our organization, Kapla, represents and advocates for over the 250,000 uh, people of Korean American, uh, the Korean descent who live here in Los Angeles County. And I am deeply concerned about the demolition project plan at the Hong Zedan building at 3421 South Carolina Street. Uh, you know, it was, uh, I'm just going to echo kind of what the other speakers said, but Hong Zedan was founded by the Korean independence activist Hozan An Chang-ho, um, whose group was uh, responsible for leading the fight against the Japanese occupation of Korea. And the Hong Zedan uh, building on Catalina became the base camp in which they planned the movement, which would eventually lead to the independence of Korea from Japan. So I just wanted to express my strong support for this nomination in designating the building. Uh, as, as a historic and cultural monument. Um, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Next caller. Joseph Shin, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. You have been unmuted. On my end, please unmute. Joseph Shin. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the first name again? Joseph Shin. Oh, Joseph Shin. Joseph Shin, she unmuted. Moving on. Next caller. Yuhu Lee, you have been unmuted. You hi Lee, you have been unmuted. Hello, hi. Can I be heard? Yes. Hi. Right. Nice meeting you, uh, everyone, and thank you for the presentation. This is Yuhui Lee. I'm the representative of the owner. So can I have more, uh, a few more minutes? 
Yes, you may. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm the representative for 3423 Catalina Street LLC, the owner of this property. We purchased the property in April 2020 with the purpose of developing the property with transit oriented communities affordable housing project. To protect our investors in the development, we did a extensive due diligence before purchasing the property to confirm that it did not contain any historical resources. We also worked with a local real estate broker who knows the community, but who had no knowledge of this history. Well, we want to be very, very sensitive and respectful to the nomination and its cause. We hope you understand that if the building is designated, it will be a devastating result for our project and our investors. Because we have put lots of time and effort on designing a quality housing project with time, with affordable units for the neighborhood. Still, we understand that it is your job to consider the application and to determine if it meets the criteria. And we still will be very happy to assist you and the applicants in any way possible through this process to make a final conclusion. We are also happy to commit to work with the applicant, applicant to honor the legacy of Dota and Hong Chi, and Chang Ho, even if the building is now designated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next caller. Caller Catherine Gudis, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello, my name is Kathy Gudis. I'm a history professor, and this past winter I taught a class with undergraduate students on Los Angeles and Inland Empire California histories. As part of it, my undergraduate students studied the sites relevant to Dosan An Chong Ho. Um, they did so and were able to find this property as one that we could visit through our virtual tours using online maps, etc. What they found and what I found through Survey LA projects in the Korean American survey were these important facts that have been reiterated here, that this was a centerpiece to community building, that it offers us, those of us who are not within the Korean and Korean American communities, as well as those within it, a way to understand the very long and complicated histories of Koreans and Korean Americans in Los Angeles, California, and the United States, and the ongoing relationships to Korea and to the politics of independence as a site where independence and the meanings of it were considered as well as those resonant issues of mutual aid regarding housing for elderly, ways of talking about independence movement and cultural heritage. It's incumbent upon us to mark that not only is this a centerpiece for that kind of study and to be able to point to it as a way to understand Korean American community development in Los Angeles and California, but to also think about diaspora and the impact of the Korean American war on residents here and the diaspora thereafter, after the post 1965 era immigration swell where they came uh, here among other places. Thank you. Next caller. Caller 2526, you have been unmuted. You can press star six to unmute. Asia, Kim, can you we can we get translation on that? Yes. What was the last word to the phone number? Uh, star six to unmute. Uh, that was two five two six. Uh, 전화번호 마지막 네 숫자가 이 오 이육이신 분 star 하고 육을 누르세요. 그러고 발언을 시작하실 수 있습니다. Am I unmuted now? Good, because I've been trying to unmute. Uh, this is Jim Childs, North University Park Community Association, an ad hoc, uh, the local preservation community here in this uh, neighborhood in South Central. And we are in full support of this nomination. Uh, we welcome the uh, monument designations of buildings that have gone unnoticed because the people went unnoticed. Most of you know this neighborhood to be the homes of great leaders of this city with great mansions. But behind those mansions, there's another community that's always been here as well. And it's, it's, it's great for all of us to hear the support of the people connected with this and how important it is to them. And they are important to the history of my community. So 
I wish you would move this forward. And respect to the persons who are complaining about not knowing it's historic, due diligence is required. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Next caller, Laura Myers, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Thank you. Um, are you able to hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. My name is Laura Myers. Um, I am speaking on behalf of West Adams Heritage today. Um, and as you know, our organization, just like Hollywood Heritage, actually, we have spent the better part of the last 15 to 20 years on researching and documenting the history of other layers of history, not just as Jim just said, um, the builders of the mansions. Um, most notably in our part, the African American heritage, but more recently, I've done a deep dive into the hidden history of the Asian American um, population that had lived in the West Adams area. And especially with the Koreans, we did not know the hidden stories, the hidden history. Um, and I, as I mentioned just two weeks ago, when we were talking about a different um, potential monument, the Korean Methodist Church, um, it's become very important to us here in LA and across the country to start designating historic resources that look like all Americans um, and don't just look like me or some of you. Thank caller. you. Caller Chang Hoon Lee, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Lee Chang Hoon Shi, unmute. Can you say? I am Chang Hoon Lee, and I strongly, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm talking on behalf of Hong Sadan. I've been a member of Hong Sadan since uh, 1963. I strongly support the nomination of Hong Sadan, Young Korean Academy building as a historic cultural monument. Upon arrival to the United States in 1966, I lived at the subject building for six months. It afforded me the stability and the support I needed to be successful as a student. The Hung Sadan building was a multi-purpose structure. It operated as the organization's headquarters, provided a house uh, housing to Korean students, students, and served as a social space for Korean student, student community. Much like myself, the students have grown and developed into community leaders, professionals, and contributors to America as well as Korean society. Deeply associated with the uh, Korean independence movement, the Carolina property was a long-standing civic hub Hi. in the nearly uh, Korean-American community in Los Angeles. With these erasers, Hi. our history will continue to be forgotten. Please approve this nomination in order to save, save this important Korean-American landmark. This is an important significance in Los Angeles. Next caller. Caller 1669, you have been unmuted. Please unmute by pressing star six. Uh, star six through Thank you. Sure. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Susan. I'm an organizer with ACE, Alliance of California for Community Empowerment. Uh, I'm here as representing uh, a lot of our members that live in District 8, where this, uh, this historical monument is. Uh, and we're here to support the site and to satisfy two of the HCM material, which is well supported by the substantial evidence by the community organizations with expertise in the fire in the in the field, as such local seven twenty one, which is with partners with us, and USC four, which is our coalition, respectfully request that this commission recommend the city council considers and declares the site a historical cultural monument. I also have with me a member in in this district, K that speaks Spanish. 
So I'm going to let her do her uh, public comment. Is that okay, commissioners? Yes. Okay, so Angelina, is it for introducing? Okay, my name is Angelina Jimenez. Pertenezco al Distrito 8, soy miembro de ACE. Me gustaría hablar en público para comentar sobre el artículo número 8. Me gustaría hablar con los comisionados que apoyen este sitio porque satisface de todos de los criterios HCM que está bien respaldado por evidencia sustancial de organizaciones comunitarias con experiencia en este campo como tal el local 721 USC uh, solicitan respetuosamente que esta comisión recomiende que el Consejo Municipal considere y declare el sitio como monumento histórico cultural y mi manera de pensar un poco más es que cómo puede ser que quieran, nos quieran tumbar lo hermoso que tenemos en nuestra ciudad y, y como vecina no me gustaría que lo hicieran porque cómo puede ser que quieran cambiar algo hermoso por una caja de zapatos, porque eso es lo que construye Ripalink. Esa es mi manera de pensar y por favor piénselo antes de tumbar cualquier edificio viejo porque es lo bonito que tenemos en la ciudad. Por favor, no más cajas de zapatos para Ripalink. Uh, commissioners, do you need, need me to translate this or you got it? Yes, could you please say your name for the record and give us a summary of what was said? Thank you. We really appreciate you. Yes. Um, her name is Angelina Jimenez. My name is uh, Hassan Suniga. I'm an organizer with eight. She was uh, specifically talking about the item number eight. Um, she was saying that she's a member of eight for many years and lives here in the community for now than 50 years. Um, she would like to speak in, in public comment, you know, on, on this, on this, um, meeting with the commissioners that, you know, represent the historical values on our community, uh, to understand that this site is uh, historical, as, you know, the criteria that HMC uh, supported, and that that also, you know, the community and organizations within a spirit with this uh, field uh, have said that this is historical, and that, you know, just like her uh, brothers in, in the fight with Local 721 and and other organizations that are part of the USA coalition wants to ask you guys to recommend to the city council to consider and declare the site of historical cultural monument, but also in her personal, uh, as, a, as a person that lives here in the district, uh, she doesn't want to continue seeing her um, historic um, area to be demolished by companies like Triple A, where in her words, they're like shoeboxes. They're not pretty at all, uh, and they don't bring any no history. If anything, they're erasing our history, um, like the Korean Americans and others that live here. Um, it is not the first intent for them to be doing this. It's essentially the second intent for her knowledge. Uh, and she wants you guys to consider that uh, as her living here in a homeowner for 50 years, she doesn't want this to continue happening. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, next caller. Caller Lynette Kim, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Um, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Lynette Kim, a rising senior from Fairfax High School. I was recently alerted by this urgent news of the demolition of the home South Island property. As a proud Korean myself, I would like to bring to light of its undeniable impact on Korean history. I support the conservancy of Hong Sa Ban because of its significant historical location here in America. It is considered a historic cultural monument as it serves as an important symbol to the Korean identity and endeavor for Korean independence led by Dozan An Chang Ho. Hong Sa Dan is the birthplace of the key organization that, so, that built civic and political leadership capacity for the Korean independence movement. Hong Sa Dan is historical property that reflected public unity of all social classes for a common cause. Therefore, with significant influence and international change that Hong Sa Dan has brought, I just support the nomination of Hong Sa Dan. Thank you. Next caller, caller Roland Salsa, you have been unmuted, please unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, proceed. Hi, uh, my name is Roland Souza, president of West Adams Heritage, and I thank you for considering the Hong Kong Dong Young Korean Academy on South Catalina Street in the West Adams area. 
you know, community, we have been identifying structures that often have been underrepresented in historic cultural nominations in the past. For the past 40 years, the West Adams community has been actively celebrating the incredible and diverse community that we have been and continue to be. I'm proud to support this nomination and urge the commission to take this under consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, Chang Hai, Chang Hai Young, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Chang Hai Young, she, Chang Hai Young, she unmuted. You say, oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, just one second. Uh, uh, my name is Chang Hai Young. I was chairman of a Young Korean Academy. I did 12 branch offices all of the United States. Um, recently, a book was published about Gosan and Chang -ho in Korea. In the book, Gosan was described as the single most important person in the recent history of Korea. I'm going to repeat again. It was described that Gosan was the single most important person in the recent history of Korea. The nomination of the Hung Sadam building as a historic cultural monument goes to the heart of American dream. When there is no hope, many young Korean Americans kept the stone of hope out of mountains of despair because of this Hung Sadam building. This Hung Sadam building is a stone of hope, liberty, and American dream. You know, in Riverside, California, there are three statues. One is Mahatma Gandhi, who is Martin Luther King Jr. The third statue is Dosan An Chang-ho, who established Hung Sadan. Who is Dosan An Chang-ho? He's like a Dr. Martin Luther King. Like a Dr. King, Dosan was the man of hope and uh, dream. If he might be Hung Sadan building, this will be a total disaster to the great city of Los Angeles and in the United States. Thank you. Next caller. Caller Hesu Garcia, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hello, Commissioners. I am Jesus Garcia, a research and policy analyst for SCIU721. On behalf of SCIU721 and in partnership with USC Forward Coalition, we support the historical culture monument, monument designation of the former Han Sadan headquarters at 3421 South Catalina. Uh, SCIU 721 is the many who are Korean Americans, Asian Americans, and who take great pride in their cultural, uh, in their culture history in the city, such as this the property under further investigation as a potential HCM. I yield my time. Thank you. Next caller. Caller 4848, you have been unmuted. Please press star 6 to unmute. Asia Kim, can we get translation? Yes. Uh, 전화번호 4848로 끝나시는 분, star 하고 6을 누르세요. Thank you. Hello, hello, can you hear me now? Yes, proceed. All right, finally, thank you. My name is Joseph Esquire Shin. I'm the founder and continuing scam master of Koreatown's official Boy Scout Troop 777 for the last 26 years. Ten years ago, we became the official Hung Sadan Boy Scout Troop. Uh, for us, Tozan uh, was a Korean American community activist who taught through peaceful activism and and through education. Tozan uh, An Chong Ho is considered the father of modern day Korea. Tozan is to Korea what George Washington is to the United States. He is the Korean American version of Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, and, and Gandhi. We are the YKA. We are still alive. We are active. And the Catalina House is vital to passing on our Korean American history and developing righteous and ethical second and third generation Korean Americans. We plead that you save our history. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Barron, we do not have any more hands raised for this item. Oh, we okay. have, we have Thank one. Thank you. Here, one more. One more. Uh, Paul Min, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul sang Min, a member from Sada LA chapter. This building was not only a headquarter of Sada, but also the foundation of Korean independence movement from 1929 to 1945, and closely related with the movement throughout US, China, and Korea. After Korean independence, 175 Sada members were awarded Korean National Patriot Medal. Out of 175, including Do Sanan Chang Ho, 80 members were from US. The meaning of this building is very important, not only for the history of Korean American community in <coughs> LA, but also for the history of US and Korea, because this place is the representative of history itself of freedom and democracy. In order to save our important history, please support and approve the nomination of the Untadam building at the HCM. Thank you. Next caller. Caller, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Hey, Jack, can you repeat the name that's on the screen of the uh, caller who's just been unmuted? Oh, is it written in Korean? Yes. yes. Okay, let me look at the screen. Uh. So while you're doing that, James Williams City Planning. So our last speaker will be Marn. Jay Cha will be our last speaker so that the commission can go ahead and uh, move forward with their uh, deliberations for the continued consideration of this IATA. James, is that a promise? <laughs> that is my best effort. <laughs> Can we proceed with Martin J. Cha while uh, translator tries to identify the previous caller? Yes, let's go with Martin J. Cha. You have been unmuted. Please unmute. Martin J. Cha, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. Okay, my name is Man Jay Cha, a member of uh, Hung Saban. Uh, uh, let me um, uh, let me stress the message of the An Chang Ho. Uh, uh, his message was that the importance of democracy. Democracy not only as a political institution and practice, but also ways of and so uh, 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 let me now Koreans have one point one point seven million million population in the United States. Um, his teaching democracy uh, left a legacy to uh, uh, what I will uh, present to you uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, we have uh, Steve Choi, California State Assembly, and also Dave Means, State Senator. 
and also we have four four congress persons of Korean descent I am. two democrats and two republicans uh republic two republicans are from southern california they are women that is your science sir uh this is no small accomplishment no one asked them this also next caller no i i identify the the caller uh is he on the phone or you may just say name? name thank you yes. yeah. and also hi Did you see? yes Unmute as you say, We are not getting anything. We're going to move on. Check. Hi, do you mind announcing that this is our last caller? Our last caller is uh, Sun Hickman. If you do not mind uh, making that announcement. No, not at all. Sun Hickman? Yes. Sun Hickman, you're the last one. Sun Hickman, you're the last one. Sun Hickman, you have been unmuted. Please unmute. You can unmute by pressing star six. Sun Hickman. I'm not getting anything on their end. Commissioner Barron, we do not have any more hands raised for this item. Commissioners, if I may, though, uh, just before you go into deliberations, again, Ken Burns, Senior Office of Historic Resources. Um, in addition, I wanted to thank uh, all the members of the public and particularly thank Katie Ja Kim for uh, stepping in as translator when our um, a uh, retained translator was having technical difficulties, so thank you for that. But I also wanted to note for the commission uh, the presence today among the attendees of the uh, Consulate General um, of uh, the Korean Consulate General in Los Angeles. You did receive a letter from the Consul, Consul General um, expressing interest and support um, uh, in this nom of this nomination, uh, and just wanted to note their presence today that the Republic of Korea, its government, uh, has taken interest in this in addition to the strong community interest. And just wanted to see if there was uh, uh, a representative that was intending to speak or having difficulties. Maybe just give a moment, but otherwise to move on and note, note their presence and support. Okay, so yep. seems, yeah. yes. We can go, we can go ahead. Do you mind asking if there is a representative from the Korean consulate they would like to speak at this time? We see that they are present. Yeah. 혹시 영사관 영사님이 지금 발언을 하시고 싶으신가요? 지금 기회를 드리겠답니다. All right, thank you. I think we can move on and just uh, acknowledge their uh, their support and interest. Thank you. Okay, I'm closing the public comment period. Um, any uh, comments, questions, thoughts, commissioners? It seems like this is something that we should take under consideration based on just the amount of enthusiasm of nothing else. Seems like what were the uh, a worthy thing to take on. And Commissioner Walsh, I'd like to thank the, the, the presenters and the callers for enlightening me on the history of the Korean uh, Korean American community. I think I've learned more between the Japanese American community and Korean American community <laughs> than I have in the previous 35 years in Los Angeles. So I appreciate their their information and uh, interest. Yes, well, well said, Mr. Walsh. Any other comments? Do I have a motion? 
Uh, this can be from Lofsky and the moves that we take on oh, this... Sedan. Yeah, do you want to make it? Or do you want to make it the motion? No, that's okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll second whatever okay. you say. <laughs> Be careful with that. I move that we take Hung Sai Don under consideration and accept his, the accept his staff report findings. I'll second that motion. Roll call, James. Certainly. Commissioner Malofsky. Yes. Commissioner Canner. Diane. Yeah. Screening froze. Oh, sorry. I thought I said yes. Yes. And Commissioner Barron. Yeah. Yes. Only three of us left. At least three this meeting, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you. That motion passes. So uh, we're concluding our meeting at 3.09. I don't know if we're setting a record, but it's in the ballpark of a record. Can I make a comment before you conclude the meeting? Certainly. I want to thank you for hanging in and chairing this meeting today. It's just the one marathon. Uh, and also thank you for over the past 10 plus years of setting a really high bar uh, for me to, to follow in uh, the presidency. So expressing my appreciation and uh, expressing gratitude for, for the work and effort the time you've been in. Thank you, Barry. And I'd like to second that. Thank you. All those in favor. And, and <laughs> I'd like Barry to keep in mind Richard's fighting words in February, when we heard from the transportation people who want to uh, dig in at Union Station and come up with a crazy new world, and Richard said to them, by God, we'll do everything we can to protect this monument. That's going to be the worst on his tombstone. Well, the good news is Richard and I are still on the committee to review whatever it is they think they're doing. So. I'll be right next to you, Barry. I'll so, be, so the fight continues. I'll be uh, helping you all I can. I appreciate it. Okay. So, um, again, we're I guess we're at 311 now, and uh, I think the next meeting is uh, August 5th. Is that right, Lumber? Okay, and I guess we'll be yes. zooming then as well. Like we'll continue to zoom. All right, Ken. Thanks, a lot. Thanks, Richard, for everything. Thank you. All right. Have a good rest of the evening. Thank you. you Thanks, too. all of you. Thank 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 you.